you are now tuned in to the network the youtube channel that takes complex networking topics breaks it down to a more simple language today's topic is section 2.8 of the ccna exam describe ap and wlc management access connections telnet ssh http https console and tac action radius that was a mouthful this is a topic again in the ccna exam notice the keyword here says describe so essentially we're not going to be doing hands-on again today and i'm sorry about that but this is going to be the last video where i'm just reading powerpoints y'all y'all know i hate doing that but you know i just like going back to the basics and most of y'all you know most of my subscribers uh probably y'all probably want to skip this video because this is a lot of simple stuff and i'm pretty sure y'all know most of this but if you don't welcome to the channel I have this annoying tag that I that I always uh, play in my videos. But anyways, y'all know AP stands for access point. Basically like a hotspot. WLC is wireless LAN controller. It's a device that's on the network that controls a bunch of APs, right? So we're going to break down management access connections, different ways to log into these devices. So y'all are familiar with a login screen like this, right? You know how some websites you could log in with just a username and password, right? But if you got another website, let's say your bank account, right? You got a username and password for that. Another website, you got a username and password for that. And if your usernames and passwords are not the same, which most people do make them the same, if they're not the same, that's too many logins to keep up, keep up with, right? So they came up with something that's similar to this, which is single sign-on, right? You got, in other words, you can use your Facebook account to log into your Twitter account. I believe you can do that. You can cross, you can uh, cross-reference your logins. But anyways. There's multiple ways to log into these websites, right? So you can sign into your Facebook with whatever website or app this is. You can sign in with your Facebook account. You can sign in with your Twitter account, sign in with your phone or your email, right? Well, the point I'm trying to make with this is on the network, we have networking devices that we need to log into. Like say, for example, a wireless controller. We talked about what wireless controllers are, right? It's a centralized device on your network that we use to control a bunch of APs, right? Well, there's multiple ways to log into that, right? We're gonna talk about the different ways to log into wireless controllers and access points, etc. This is not just limited to access points or wireless controllers. You can do this with switches, routers, lions and tigers and bears, oh my. But there's multiple ways to log into these devices. One way to log into our access point or our wireless controller is Telnet. It's an application protocol used to used on the internet or local area network to provide bi-directional interactive text or blah, 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 blah. Telnet basically stands for teletype network. It runs on port 23 and you log into a device. You type in Telnet, the IP address of the device. You don't necessarily have to put the port number, but boom, you can log into it. That's what Telnet is, right? Now the problem with Telnet is it's not encrypted. So when you log in with your username and password, right? If somebody has a packet sniffer or some kind of packet analyzer, they can see your username and password because the information is, is, is going across the network with clear text. SSH is a network protocol used to remotely access and manage a device, just like Telnet. However, it just runs on a different port, port number, port 22, and also it's encrypted. Tasting the food in my beard. I need, to, I need to get a haircut. I need to cut my beard and everything. Sorry for looking like this, y'all. But anyways, to log into a vice, we type in SSH minus l or yeah like minus l the username and then the ip address of the device simple as that let's just do a quick rundown on the differences between ssh and telnet right like we mentioned ssh is highly secured telnet is not because you can see the usernames and passwords or all the information that you are uh, putting across the network when you type so like let's say you sample you type in some other credentials that if some, like i said a, a good hacker can see your information if you're just using telnet a lot of organizations are trying to stray away from Telnet and using SSH to log into our devices, right? Uses a different port number. SSH uses 22. Telnet uses UDP, or I'm sorry, TCP 23. Data is encrypted. That's a in, in, in plain text. SSH uses public key encryption in order to authenticate users. Telnet has no authentication mechanisms, blah, 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 blah. If y'all want to read the rest of this, go ahead and pause it. Freeze frame it. I'm tired of reading PowerPoints, y'all. And I'm tired of this girl right here. We're going to go back to our... Our usual broad guy. It's suitable for public networks. SSH. Telnet is more used for private networks. So if you have a private network, that's cool to use that. Again, y'all want to read the rest of this? Go ahead and do that. HTTP. 
that's another way we can log into our networking devices. Basically, simply put, you open up a web browser like Chrome or Internet Explorer, and then you put in the IP address of that device on a browser. You can do that with a lot of devices nowadays. You can use it, you can use it to, to log into a Cisco IP phone, log into your access points. You can log into, uh, you know, open up a browser, ses browser session, as you can see right here. This is a browser session for a wireless controller. This can be simulated a packet trace as well. You open up a web browser, again, you put in the uh, IP address of the device, and then you'll most likely be you prompted with a username and password, prompted for a username and password. After you log in, you'll be able to access the device and see the GUI or graphical user interface. It's much more pleasing to the eye than a CLI, which is command line interface. Rather than typing commands and stuff, you just point and click to control your wireless control, as you can see right here. That's HTTP. There's also HTTPS, basically the secure version of HTTP. It's more secure and encrypted. So you all the same thing. You open up a web browser, put in HTTPS colon slash slash or whack whack as some some people would say, and you put in an IP address. As you can see right here, it's get prompt. This is a this is a login screen for a wireless controller. You click the login button, type in our username and password, and then boom, you'll be able to access a log a, a wireless controller. I got a wireless controller. I, we might be able to play with that in uh, in the next video, or we might just use Packet Tracer. So I so I, I can show y'all an example of of this. Because the next topic is configure. As you can see right here, today we're describing, meaning we're just going to talk about it. And configure, we need to actually get our hands dirty. The components of a wireless LAN access for client connectivity using GUI only. So we're going to log in and actually play with it. And that's what we're going to do in the next video. Console port. We can also log into our networking devices using the console port which i'm pretty sure most of y'all familiar with that if y'all watching this video you can console into your routers into your switches on the left we're logging we can console into a wireless controller using this port or we can console into our ap using that port normally a console port will be indicated in a uh like an aqua blue color just like this right here See, notice this line got this got a, a, a aqua blue color. Some are some um, devices you can console into it using a mini USB port, just like this right here. But most of the time, you'll see an RJ45 port, network port, just like that, allow you to console into it. Obviously, you'll need a light blue cable, which is known as the console cable, to console into these devices. Used for out of band, out of band management, system recovery, and initial boot functions. So, in case we don't have any network connectivity at all the only thing the only difference between a console port and other uh protocols such as https and ssh and telnet etc etc is that we have to be in front of the device the device to console into it we have to physically be right in front of it so if you got a wireless LAN controller all the way in wuhan china it's appropriate to talk about that right now right but if you got a, a wireless controller in Wuhan, China, you you won't be able to console into it because you got to be, well, unless you're in Wuhan, China. If you're really far away, you won't be able to console into it because you have to be physically in front of it to console into it. And that's the difference between using console, that's local access versus these other methods such as SSH and Telnet. And you can use those functions to remote into them remotely. Here's the main differences between HTTP and HTTPS. HTTPS uses 443. SSL certificates are using HTTPS, HTTP does not use it, so on and so forth. Read this power, PowerPoint if y'all want to, pause it, freeze frame it, whatever. All right, we back. And then lastly, we talk about, or we're going to talk about TAC acts and radius, right? Now, before we do that, we need to talk about AAA. A AAA is, stands for accounting, authentication, and an authorization. I had a brain fart there. It's a server that has a bunch of usernames and passwords, right? It's remote though. So normally, if you wanna like say, log into you, to your wireless controller, the username and passwords will be stored on there. The AAA server is gonna be a separate server that will, it's kinda of like a, a, a third party that's gonna be authenticating us, right? So the username and passwords are gonna be stored on that AAA server. Case in point, this image right here, we got this dude right here who's uh who's dressed up i don't know why he dressed up because he working from home he could have just put his regular clothes on he should be working from home <laughs> need to be quarantined but anyways he logging into this router or it could be a using a, a a wireless controller or whatever he uses his username and password right but the router does it, it, the router is going to send that information off to the triple a server and be like hey look the user network bro is using the user uh, the username network bro and his password is cisco one two three 
is that okay? The AAA server is going to look at that and be like, hmm, I have that in my database. Yes, that looks correct. Go ahead and let them in. And then that information is going to get sent back to the router or wireless controller because we're going to be doing wireless stuff on this channel right now, right? And he'll be like, oh, okay, he said he's good. I'm going to go, you can go ahead and get granted access, right? And then finally the administrator can get in. That's how AAA works. Now there's two ways that we can use AAA. There's TAC Axe and Radius, right? As you can see right here, it says here, server using either radius or tac -X protocol they're basically protocols or languages that we use to log into these devices here's the main differences between radius and tac -X. radius uses the, basically they just use different port numbers one is secure and one is more secure or one is secure and one is not as secure right radius uses uh those port numbers um attack -X encrypts the entire packet i believe uh what else tac -X was it was persistent proprietary but then after that they made it an open standard meaning you can only use tac to accept uh with cisco devices but then afterwards i believe in like 1993 or something like that they made it so that way you could use it on any any kind of device so it's open source in other words you know developers can use it on their devices uh radius was developed in 91 and then after that i believe it was uh it was created as an open standard as well and that's basically the main difference between the two exists. It's just that we use it with AAA. It's just the language that we use to log into these devices using AAA will either be Radius or tac -X. That's the basic, the main difference between the two. Yeah, I know I just like to keep it in single language. That's what we do on this channel. Bruh. Today, unfortunately, again, y'all know what it is when y'all see this, uh, when y'all see this little girl, we would normally do a hands-on lab get our hands dirty and kind of play with this stuff, right? But again, we're just going to be describing those things. Again, those are different ways that we can log into our APs, access points, or our wireless controllers. We can SSH to it, we can telnet to it, we could use HTTP or HTTPS, which is more secure. We could also use radius attack acts to log into these devices, right? That's basically what it is. Multiple ways to log into a, log into a network device. That's my YouTube page. That's my Twitter handle. If y'all like this channel, please hit me with the like button. Hit me with the subscribe button if you're not subscribed to these channels. I'm gonna be trying to you know, get these videos out as much as I can. I got so much time on my hands because I'm quarantining, working from home. I, I got more time on my hands and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, if you like these videos, share these videos as well, man. Hit me with some, you know, hit me, you know, I, I'm just trying to grow my channel and stuff like that. So just, you know, spread the word, man. In other words, comment, like, subscribe to the network.